for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Mm-hmm. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey, everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Oh, you're back. <laughs> yeah. Do you have jeans on? A little gas go. No, I can't light anything. Uh, I'm wearing it. No, it's been at least three years since you've done that. It, maybe four. Since I've lit a fart? Chris has never seen that. I heard that. You heard it, but you've never seen it. Have you ever seen anyone light a fart, Chris? No. No, I, you know, I like it. Uh, you, you know, this is, for me, it's like doing magic at a uh, retarded children's hospital when I light a fart in front of somebody who's never seen it before. The look of awe and wonderment. Oh, yes. Yeah, like, <laughs> that would have been a good one. Would have, would have been good. Would have been great. But I can't uh, I can't do it in the uh, man-made made fibers. Mm, so they I'm, melt? Catch on fire? Oh yeah, yeah. I I will. We'll just no, no. My will be sealed shut permanently if these uh, Dacron Puma sweats go up. I, you got to do it in denim. I I have a theory that denim was actually made of, originally. They say it was for miners. The uh, jeans, the, yeah. the, the the Levi jeans. Yeah. I think it was for guys who lit farts. It's that good. Of course. It it has all the protective qualities of an oven mitten, but yet. It, but air passes through it like just a drapes in a douche not, commercial. Not just air, just, but methane. The, the point is, is it doesn't stop any of the fart at all. If yes. anything, it just fans it out a little. But it's really like wearing like wearing one of those uh, those uh, volcano suits, you know. You know, you know, you know the ones that look like tinfoil. Oh, the yeah, ones yeah. that air, the ones that the guys who fight fires on the at the right. airport wear. Yes, yes, so the, or the oil rigs and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. So I will not try it in uh, the mm. sweats. But you uh, drop trowel. It is a. I, I will drop trowel. Trow. I'll drop trowel. I'll, I'll drop trowel. Yeah, listen. No, I can't. You might explode. No. Yes. I will. Uh, I got my ass. <laughs> looks like a. You know the uh, head of a troll doll down there. Yeah. It's a lot of lot of hair. Yeah. I will go up like too. a Roman candle. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It used to be orange. Yeah, now it's brown. Bad. That's bad. So here here's my point. There'll be no uh, fart lighting, but it is a feast for the senses when I light those farts. And uh, when I yell, get the lights, and it gets dark, and you see nothing, and then pow, the flame. And as you pan around a room, like I said, the flame, uh, it, it it lights up the uh, faces of the uh, happy onlookers. You're just frustrated, Chris. It's going to be big. I'm going to start wearing jeans. All right? All right. Dave Attell, the world's funniest stand-up comedian, is uh, coming on tonight. How do I know? Because he called and said he was going to be late. That's good. Did, you, right. did, you, did you talk to him? No, I did not. He called uh, Junior, 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 Producer Lauren. Told her. Yeah. Okay. Good time. All right. Well, I don't see anything on the screen, so I may have to just uh, filibuster for another uh, five minutes or so. You ready to rock here, mm-hmm. Drew? Yep. All right, so David Tell from Insomniac is coming in here. Also from uh, Crank Yankers, a little show called Crank nice. Yankers. He's uh, coming in in just a couple of few, and uh, we'll speak to uh, Ryan, who's 17. Ryan? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, buddy. What's happening? Man, uh, I've been listening to you guys for such a long time, and anybody who doesn't believe in Jesus Christ, as I don't believe in you guys because Thank you guys you. are the answer to all life's problems. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Not exactly our intention, but go no, ahead. That's mine. Go ahead. Well, um, my girlfriend right now is 14, and I'm 17. I'll be 18 in October mm-hmm. this year. But and you're a virgin, right? No. No? No. Um, actually, that's where, that's where this comes in. She... Uh, when I turn 18, we've been having we've been sleeping together for the last year or so, and was, I don't know what kind of legal 13. troubles I can get in. You know how I can avoid those legal troubles. Mm-hmm. You're turning 18. Uh, I don't think appreciably changes the legal trouble. It yet. doesn't. I don't think so. Why? Now he's, he's more than three years older. Well, uh, okay, but still, I mean, by the way, uh, once you're not a minor. Once you're an adult, is there a difference between being 57 and 18? 
I mean, I suppose I in the know. eyes of the judge, he'd be disgusted at a 57-year-old having sex with a 16-year-old, whereas he wouldn't with an 18-year-old. Right, right. But in the eyes of the law, is there really any appreciable difference? I don't know. All right. I don't know how to answer that. And as I've said many hundreds of zillions of times, can we just go ahead and get the age of consent uniform around the country? Just call it 18 or 17, or as I've uh, actually pushed for, 13. Nice. I mean, can we just decide on a number instead of having it go all over the map, being like five years difference between uh, Hawaii and California? Yeah. All right. Well, that is the strange thing in California, where if you're th within three years of the person, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you more than three years older? Yeah. Yeah, I see. Mm. All right. Well, maybe uh, you being 18 and she being 14, maybe that's uh, that should be the end of the road here. I mean, you being a senior in high school and her being in the ninth or 10th grade? Yeah, I I really don't know. I don't want to end it with her just because just because I'm turning 18. I mean, how's your relationship with her parents? Um, it's her relationship or my relationship? Yours. Um, I'm on good terms with her mom. Her wife, yeah. her mom loves me, but her dad is her dad <laughs> just about hates me because that's you know, usually where you get into trouble with these situations. One of the parents pushes things. Well, her yeah. dad is scared to go to court. He won't even go go to court to get uh, legal custody of her. Hmm. Of her own well, daughter. well, okay. Well, hold on. What grade is she in? Ninth. Going to settle it. Ninth. Ninth. And you're a senior. Well, she got held back. I, I'm actually a a junior. Did you get held mm. back, too? No. All right. Why'd she get held back? Uh, just messing around. Uh, when? Uh, okay, uh, hold on. What? Uh, let me explain what you have to... I'm a product of the L.A. Unified School District. To be held back, you have to uh, defecate on three teachers and try to kill the four. I just said, it's got a homicide must be I mean, you, you, you have to... A, here's the only way you can be held back. You, you, can, you have to not show up at all. You Nothing. never enroll. Right. That's it. Other, Even then, I just sat there winding up the uh, propeller on my beanie for five years. They never, they never, they moved me right along. As a matter of fact, it was like, let's get them out of here. Well, I think that's their plan. It was, hey, uh, Corolla, uh, you want to graduate next year? Geez, I'm only in the uh, ninth grade. No. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll get you out. Well, it's, uh, what do I do? I'm uh, four, bring, bring those library books back. And Fourteen. Let you go. Drop off we the people, and then uh, you go out and get yourself a job carpet cleaning. What do you say? Sound good? Here's your diploma. All right. Uh, he needs. They need to break up. I was yeah. thinking about you today and your lack of value in education. That that is mind-boggling to me. Yes. Well, look at me. Literally a millionaire. Yeah, I know. With arguably you, a genius. I knew with you. With no out. education. I know with you worked out. But imagine what you could have accomplished a with of education and b. Hold on. What does that mean? Imagine what I could have accomplished who knows? with an education. Who knows? Who knows? I'd, I'd be some uh, some morphine addict who was uh, mm -hmm. tortured. And by the way, there's nothing worse than uh, ha having uh, making like 40 grand a year and having a, a master's degree. You know, you feel tortured. It's not, see, for me, it's all gravy. Like if you're a Corolla, all you got to do is make 35K a year and, and you're making much more than you should. Right. I feel sorry for these poor saps who have nine years of college and all they have to show for it is like 41 grand a year at some crappy library job or some dead end gig somewhere. They constantly feel like they're not, they're underachievers. I feel like an overachiever just by having a job. Right. I understand. All right. Just there, there's. I didn't even imagine where I could have been. No, what you could have done. What would I know that I don't know now? I'm the one who knows everything on this show. How have, dare you? You have instincts about things. But I, yes, I have instincts. I know what everyone's talking about. Right. But that's instincts. But you. But, but if you actually had knowledge, you actually could read, I know and do what, calculus, what? And study I know physics everything. And study philosophy. Well, and who knows what I can build a house. I can tell a joke. I can kick an ass. Mm -hmm. I'm a Renaissance man, Drew. <laughs> Please. How dare you? You hear this, Chris? When I'm not lighting farts, I'm swinging a hammer. I'm not swinging a hammer. I'm punching with a boxing glove. And I'm not punching. I'm telling a joke. What? Fixing a car. What can't I do? That's the real question. And let me say this to you, Drew. Let me tell you some of all these pussies. All this time spent in college, they can't change a tire on their car. That's for sure. Now, now what about that skill? See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. right. <sighs> Imagine what I could have done. Delilah? Yes? I knew. I, I told you I could have been one of the great pirate astronauts. Absolutely. If that's what you wanted to do. Mm. Buzz Blackbeard. <laughs> Would that be a great pirate astronaut name? Who are you? Uh, Buzz Blackbeard. <laughs> R. 
Delilah? Yeah. You're 17? Yes, I am. What's up? Um, okay. I'm a little embarrassed about this, but here goes. Whenever I seem to, um, masturbate, it doesn't, like, I'm expecting something more than what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if I'm, like, doing it wrong, if there's, like, a certain way to do it. For the, for the most part, um... Uh up to about age 22, 24, most women don't, most of them, not all, but most don't find much in pleasure in just masturbation. Do, do you have an orgasm? No. No. Oh. Well, that, that all most of them, that's most of them too. Yeah, but she's saying when I masturbate, I, I'm expecting more than I'm getting. Well, if you're not getting an orgasm, you're, you're falling yeah, but the, again, women's women systems are, are very different that way. They, oh, they, the whole experience. Wonder what book Drew read that in. The in whole college. experience doesn't make sense. It's just like, oh, so what? It just doesn't doesn't click in. It's like, ah, oh, whatever. Yeah. Well, no, but what I'm what I'm saying is is they have no interest interest in connection, for instance, between arousal and desire. Yeah, they just kind of get aroused, but it has to have sort of an emotional component to it. Well, well, look. Here's here's what I'm saying. If if she's not having an orgasm, she's obviously falling short of what the stated mission was when she began diddling herself. Well, women have no many women, again they're all very different, but most of them have no drive to orgasm. So they 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 and might I, find pleasure just in the arousal, but she doesn't even get the arousal. I don't, I don't I'm not exactly sure. Most women who masturbate are heading toward an orgasm or attempting an orgasm. Right. And if they had an orgasm, I think they would be satisfied with it. And Delilah. Yes. Well, first off, if you masturbate, like if I masturbated and I didn't have an orgasm, you I'd just count. Pu- I'd pull my crank off. Like I'd just be like hour number five of me tugging on myself. Right. That's right. You, you you would find me uh, collapse. That men have a drive. Rigor mortis they would, must, would set they in. Must get they and drive to do that. Paramex be cr- be prying my fingers like uh, pipe cleaners off 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 my door. Just uh, what happened? Well, his electrolytes uh, fell through the basement. He, he lost. He de- depleted of uh, all fluids, and uh, he dried up and fell over. Rest. There you go. Yeah, he. Uh, it's the way he would have wanted to go. Hypo- hypokalemic uh, arrhythmia. He died doing what he loved. <laughs> we Most. Talk- we have talked about that in a while, but uh, they always do that when that guy goes, uh, you know, the guy goes extreme backpacking and then he freezes out in the Sierras or the guy goes, uh, when the parachuting accident's like, he died doing what he loved. Really? How much do you think he loved it uh, when the chute didn't open? Or how much do you figure that was in his plan, too? The dying part? Yes. Not a big part of the plan. No. He died doing what he loved. To me, it's like, uh, if it kills you, check it off the list of things I love. That's uh, num- Number one, should not be on that list. Yeah, but backpacking, used to love it, till it killed me. Now it's no longer one of the things I love. Dave, speaking of things I love, and this is, this is good radio, Dave Attell is here, everybody. Hey, what's up? I'm sorry I'm late. That's all right. You know him from uh, Insomniac. and uh, oh, yeah? his, uh, Dr. How you doing? Good. His many, 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 many stand-up uh, appearances. I saw Dave in San Francisco, must have been uh, four years ago, three years ago. And uh, I don't go out, I never go out and yeah, watch don't. stand-up. I never go out and watch, Drew, what do I say about stand-up? I hate all comedians. <laughs> Damn it, Drew. Didn't we, did, didn't we work the beats out on this one? <laughs> no, I said I, I appreciate the art form. I could never do it. I'm intimidated by it. And uh, therefore, I don't go out and watch it. Now. I went out and watched uh, Dave. Uh, me and Jimmy uh, went to see our friend Jordan, and uh, he was opening for Dave, or uh, maybe the middle act. Point is, Dave Attell, one hour of uh, amazing hilarity. I mean, I laughed my ass off. Thank you, Adam. What about the uh, our recent, uh, you know, experience there at uh, in New York at the uh, Comedy Central Bar Mitzvah thing? We had a uh, lovely time at the uh, 13-year <laughs> Comedy Central uh, Bar Mitzvah bash in New York that I hosted and Dave performed on couple of weeks back and i think it airs in uh, a couple a couple of few uh couple of few weeks nothing like hosting a, a four-hour show yeah bro. well you know you know the motto of comedy central 13 years 13 laughs, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah 13 hour special <laughs> and uh, you know it's something i should have known like uh remember we used to do well, you wouldn't do them but i would go do those uh i'd go down to uh bakersfield and do one of those uh those band jam things right and it's great because the first band you bring out say hey you know him from love line you know him from the man show it's adam caroli come by the time you're bringing out uh, the remaining 
uh, members of of uh, Mahogany Rush <laughs> band band number twenty seven. People are pissed to see you back out on the stage for the twenty seventh time in the same evening. That's why, like in the Oscars, Billy Crystal goes out, does his goes thing, away for a while, and then goes away for a yeah. while. Lets other people come in that they're happy to see, and then when he pops up again. 20 minutes later, they're happy to see him again. Well, you mentioned around 27 the way the Jägermeister bottles came flying yeah, at you. Yeah, there would be the mini, the mini Jägermeister uh, bottle from uh, 150 yards back just goes sailing over your head and into the uh, drum kit of Third Eye Blind while you're standing there talking to the <laughs> festival crowd. And you know, it's that weird thing where it's like in your head really quickly you think, well, that could have killed me. But then your, ma- your mouth just says, uh, I hear, you know, doesn't, doesn't move for it. Dave, what's happening, buddy? Nothing, man. I'm like I said. Uh, I'm. Uh, I just got back from Japan. I didn't say it, but uh, I'm kind of you know whatever it is, jet lagged or whatever. Uh, what are we doing in Japan? We doing uh, yeah, we're doing an insomniac thing, and uh, this might be up your alley. They had a thing that we saw there. It's called the um, uh, I forget the Japanese name, but it's a rite of spring. It's a um, it's oh a the fertility yeah through. the penis thing yeah, yeah. For, you know fertility and safe sex, and <laughs> they carry around a gigantic phallus through the streets. It's pretty wild. Is that is that in Tokyo that they do that? Uh, outside, I guess it's near Osaka. It's a uh, it's cu- quite a thing. People go there, and you know, it's like all penis all the time, and they carry them through the streets. It's it's like the Stanley Cup. You know, these it, guys like <laughs> just carrying it around, drinking they with kiss it, it and stuff kissing like it, hugging it, taking pictures with it. It's a, it's a it's a bizarre culture over there. <laughs> Drew and I have uh, tried to figure it out many times. Which is, on one hand, it's really you know, oh, the guy got a B on his calculus, finally kills himself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very reverent. <laughs> There's lots of guys bowing. They're wearing ties. That's a shame and ties. And the next thing you know, they're uh, they're grinding up uh, uh, otter uh, gizzard and eating that so they yeah. get a boner. And they're, like, eating sushi off a of virgin. And they're uh, cutting out bear pancreas and grinding up... Uh, uh, rhino tusk and horns, and it's it's like it, it, it shows what happens. I think when you button people down a little bit right. too much, next That's thing true. you know, you got the penis festival <laughs> in Osaka. Well, they they we went to a uh, I guess it would be called a porn station. It's a twenty four hour cable porn channel, mm-hmm. and uh, it's kind of like a CNN of porn. Twenty four hours all porn all the time, and uh, the guy told me that there's like a culture of shame there that they're ashamed to show their bodies. And that uh, that's why, like, they have this weird thing with pubic hair over there. Do you know that they're not allowed to show pubic hair like, right. in, their, in their pornographic material? Thank God they don't. <laughs> but you're allowed any. to defecate on a woman. I don't get it. It's a weird <laughs> double standard. Yeah. And by the way, I, this is this is going to sound marginally racist, but uh, <laughs> is there a hot Japanese porn star? I know there's Minka, the number one Asian she's big Korean porn queen. Though. Yeah. Well, she's Korean, but the porn magazines make it seem like she's Japanese because it's easier to sort of get your mind around when you're beating off. Like, right. Korea, <laughs> huh? What parallel? What are we talking about? Usually they're a mix, like an Amerasian, some kind of... Yeah. And and it's like a Ron Jeremy pull, pulled out his mushu pork and gave her another <laughs> shot of, of... You know, the point is, is all the Japanese references work, whereas the Korean stuff, uh, right, she's got a nice kimchi garden in her shorts or something like <laughs> it's confusing even the mushu pork is chinese food but oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. oh i'm sorry yeah oh yeah. i think they make her chinese okay they make her chinese. Well, no, mount fuji is japanese well right? she's in a yeah. mount fuji movie. yeah okay they screw it all up. well that's the other thing too a good porn connoisseur does not know the difference between chinese and japanese and, oh let me tell you all the years i barely know is is as i'm is finding out tonight here. yes yeah all the years Remember I worked in education at the beginning of the show. Shut That's up! How nice it was. Shut been. your ears, Mike. All well, all the people I worked construction with had no idea. They were just they were just Asians, or they never <laughs> they never actually <laughs> knew the difference between Chinese or uh, Japanese. Yes. Well, it's the real the real thing hard to tell over there. Like just from bar hopping around in uh, Rapungi, which is kind of like the bar area, you know, is uh, the uh, Japanese transsexuals, you know, the trannies, because mm. uh, you really can't tell, you know, because they do have like an androgynous look. And yeah. when you're drunk, everyone looks like Lou Diamond Phillips, so it's very hard to <laughs> right. to you know just sort things out over there. Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm trying to think of a culture that uh, works. All the dark skin cultures, you, you there's going to be tranny problems. Mm-hmm. See, you know what I mean? Like, you go to Minnesota, you don't have a problem with transsexuals. You don't get a 350-pound uh, ice fisherman named yes. Jan confused <laughs> with a hot, nubile young chick. But uh, mm-hmm. you go to you go to like Brazil, you could you could get burned. Yeah, badly, badly, badly. Hot. Very hot. Yeah. Is there a story there? Badly. Oh. Very badly burned. Ooh. No, but just the the entire <laughs> when the entire country is 
137 pounds and five eight and a half, mm -hmm. and has the same skin tone and sort of modestly breast. Uh, uh, there's really it's, <laughs> it's going to be tough. And you're boozing. Oh yeah, Rio. That's what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was just there too. Yeah. That's a wild. That's a wild. It is. It's a sex town. I mean, it's a wash with whores. Every right. guy who comes down there is looking for action. And these things happen, you know? Sure. So sure. what if you come no, back, you banged it, you know, you banged a train. Hey. It's nobody's fault. Right. It's carnival. It's nobody's fault. It doesn't make you a bad guy. It doesn't. It does not make you a bad guy. So you're right. gay. <laughs> let, me, let me ask this. Mm. I was uh, arguing with this uh, with uh, Kimmel the other day, which is I said a uh, place like uh, Sweden probably has the hottest chicks. But if you're just going for average, you go to South America. You see what I mean? Like, if somebody said, look, you just got to go out in the street and grab a chick, I'll give you 10 seconds, you, you, go, to, you go to Rio. You, you'll be able to find yeah. something suitable to hump very quickly. Whereas Sweden has the hottest chicks, I think, but, uh, but you got to sort through. You got you to get through a lot of uh, efforts to get to that one hot chick. I, what, what is the best-looking uh, nation, you think? Do we, do we, do we, have, we have one? Like, we're, like, not... The reality not is mix, the mixes are probably the best. The mix, yeah. It not, depends on what look you're... Like if you, the highest if you guys are average. Yeah. Just like, you know, not fat, uh, not a mess, you know. I. You know, somebody was telling me it's Czechoslovakia. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Got to uh -huh. get out that way. That's what I've heard. That, that's just unbelievable. That's the best yeah. kept secret. What about yeah. Rio? Rio, I, I agree with you. They have that Jessica Alba thing going yeah. there. Everybody's some kind of mix, and they have that... That weird kind of party. There's no stigma to sexuality, it seems, right. down there. Only, you know, here we have a lot of baggage with it. But uh, Sweden, don't you think that's kind of like an old look? You know, isn't that kind of like a, you know, yeah. Farrah Foss? Yeah. Sort of a Farrah Hugh Hester in the mid-70s? Mid yeah, yeah. I think it's now more of the, uh, you know, Vince Diesel kind of many races right. mixed yeah. together into beautiful. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It's just, uh, what's her name, the uh, playmate uh, of the year from a few years ago, J uh, uh, Dorothy, uh, what's her no, name? not Dorothy Stratton. The one that comes in here from a few years Victoria back. Victoria Silvstedt. Victoria Silvstedt. Yeah, you see her, and you'll get back, <laughs> back on with Sweden. Well, I heard Very that quickly. Iceland was even better than. Oh, her. really? Yeah, that they're right. they're the hottest. Well, that's uh, that's our next stop. We go uh, we go to Czechoslovakia, then we uh, go by Rio. I guess they're out in the same place. And there's then a break over. Get back to, to Iceland. All right, here we go. Oh, come on, <laughs> Julio. Yeah. You're 18. Yeah. And Swedish. All right. I don't need to talk to Julio. Ooh, time to play Germany or Florida. <laughs> we'll get you, we'll get back with you in a second, Julio. This is a game that is sweeping the country. I'm sure you've heard of it, Dave. It's called Germany or Florida. Oh. All bizarre <laughs> stories of crime and incest and all 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 the uh, the occult and the macabre. They all come from either Germany or Florida. We hear the story and then we have to guess: Germany or Florida? Go ahead, Paul. Things are sick oh, and twisted oh, yeah. from too much sun and Nazis. Sex with and death fetishes, both of them have got these. Guaranteed not to bore you, Germany or Florida. Thank you, Paul. Go ahead. All right. Hey, um, <laughs> I got actually a couple Germany or Floridas. All right. Then, Pick the uh, best I one. I got a few questions. All right. A man was arrested on charges of killing his, seven, his neighbor's 17-year-old dog by place kicking it like a football. The man, 23, was charged with cruelty to animals and vandalism Tuesday and the death of a miniature Yorkshire Terrier. He was freed on bail later. The owner said he was in his house when he saw one of the three men holding the dog like a football and then saw the man kick the animal. The owner wow. said the dog flew through the air in a high arc, hit the pavement, rolled under a parked car. The dog was mm. apparently dead when it hit the ground, and there were three men laughing. Wow. What kind of dog was it? Florida, Yorkshire Terrier. Yorkshire Terrier, mm. yeah. Florida. Mm. I said Florida because... Yeah. Old people, Yorkshires. Uh, should kick like a football. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's a that's Extra a point. I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't hold a rugby ball or a soccer ball. No, no, no place kicking in those floors. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that's what that's, I'm that's saying. American football. Yeah. So what do you think? Florida. They rested Lucy too. Yeah, I heard. and Hitler was a big dog lover, so I'd Ooh. say. Mm, Florida yeah. too. Yeah. All right, we're going we're going Florida. 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 Oh boy, it's Germany. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well done. What part of Germany, it's though? It's an oddity. Mm -hmm. Wow. I like that. Town. Yeah. Wow. Hey, you know, uh, here's, all right, here's the whole thing. Uh, we got to take a little break. That's how I play Germany and Florida, by the way. Uh, I don't like people being cruel to animals, but um, I'm okay with it. I'm not, you know, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't go nuts about it. That, that was pretty over the top. That's over the top. Yeah. That dog's yeah. 17. 
It's really like taking a 125-year-old and ki- place-kicking him. You know, if you th- if you think of it that way, you know, it's not so bad. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. All right, so I, I, I like pets, but uh, not, not as much as I like a lot of stuff. I just think people go nuts for animals. I mean, they're okay. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> All right. No, but good times. Yeah, but good times. Yeah, but a Yorkshire Terrier, that you can't even put up a fight. That's you know, really, yeah. a step above and the I, rat. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a, it's a good thing. But if he got some height on it, it it's an, <laughs> at least an interesting thing. Yeah, but still. Yeah, but still. All right. Dave Attell is here tonight from uh, Insomniac on uh, Comedy Central. Runs uh, w- Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at mm. uh, 9 o'clock and uh, all over the place. And it's got a uh, little DVD out now, too, with the, uh, Volume 1 and uh, Volume 2. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Alicia Cuthbert is going to be in here tomorrow night. She's the star of The uh, Girl Next Door. She's hot. She has a clef in her chin. I don't think it makes me gay that I like a woman with a clef in her chin. Although it's a very masculine feature, it looks nice on a woman. I'm trying to think of what else looks good on a chick that looks good on a guy. But that clef in the chin is a nice look on a woman. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Not gay. Dave Attell is uh, here tonight. Dave is, uh, well, you, you know him from Insomniac on uh, Comedy Central. Also going to be uh, doing some uh, live appearances. And, and that's really uh, where Dave shines. Yeah. Uh, he's great on Insomniac, but if you want to see the Dave Attell that uh, other comedians um, the kneel at the at the garment of, at the hem of his garment. <laughs> you understand that? And he's a short man, so it's hard to really get down that low. you got to love it. You actually have to go into like a mechanic's pit, <laughs> nice. like the ones where they change oil if you want to get down to Dave's, if you want to get down yeah. to the hem. Yeah, got it? <laughs> April 9th at uh, in Bakersfield, holy Christ. That's going to be a disaster. The Fox Theater. The Fox Theater. <laughs> Bakersfield, not a great place. Come on, NASCAR. April 10th at the, at the uh, Gore Hills uh, Canyon Club. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, I've uh, seen Dave perform, and it is uh, nothing short of spectacular. You know, uh, Adam, you talk about the cleft, the cleft chin. Is that what it is? Mm-hmm. But nobody, it seems like uh, the one thing that a lot of people have that has never really caught on to beauty uh, status, the lazy eye. Yeah. You know? Like okay. the mole that's cute, is in. Lazy yeah. cute. Come you on. know, an occasional scar sometimes is, is yeah, erotic. Yeah, can work, can work on a guy. Yeah. And, and it's funny how somebody decided a mole was, uh, well, it's yeah. a precancerous uh, mole on right. the cheek. Well, that's hot. I can I can masturbate to that. That mm-hmm. could turn into cancer in 40 years or so. But a wandering, lazy eye. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Although, yeah. To be once, avoided. A, once in a while, if there's a smoking hot chick who has a flaw, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't look good, but it's like she's a factory second. She's like uh-huh. she's like a dishwasher that you couldn't afford, but there's a dent in the side of it, and now right. maybe you could pick it up. Like getting a suit in the Philippines. It oh, looks right. right. Or, just... or like a, a Porsche that's been salvaged. Uh-huh. Like this one went into the swamp. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite right, but it's still a Porsche. <laughs> so once in a while, you do see the smoking hot chick with yeah. a weird wandering eye and you think well maybe maybe that, just maybe she's flawed enough to be injured or that, maybe her eye doesn't see me that <laughs> took that took her down from fred durst to you you know it's like <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> go ahead there true what do you got uh, uh, we still have the girl next door promotion oh yeah we will continue to issue two passes to everyone over 17 who gets on the air tonight to see the show out near them it opens april 9th starring alicia cuthbert who we'll have in here tomorrow night yes and she is uh, hot. She's got that wandering eye. <laughs> and the clap. And the clap. Yvonne? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're uh, 16? I am. All right. What's up? Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is my problem. What's that? I'm 16, right? Hello? Yeah. You're 16, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm wondering, like, if you think that's too young to have um, sex? Like, if yeah. it's to be... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Not for our callers, but, but uh, we, for, for everyone else, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who are you thinking of having sex with? This guy, well, mm-hmm. I don't know how to put this, but, like, I really want to, right? But I really don't. Why do you want to? Because oh, by the way, hold on, that's an ex- that's exclusive domain of women. Yes. I really want to, but I really don't. Like, yes. you never hear a guy go, like, I really want this mm. chick, but I really don't want her. I really want this job, but I really I don't. Like, that's such chick talk there. This is why, this is... This, this, you know what it means to me, though? so difficult. What it means what? to me is that they don't really want to. 
Yeah, yeah. Really what she's means. not. Yeah. yeah, unless I'm the dude they're talking about. What, in what which she, case no, it means here's she does what she want wants. To. What she wants is to keep the guy. That's oh. what she wants. She's one of him. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not true. Oh, she has urges. It's, yeah. It's because like, what? okay, when I think of being really in love, like mm-hmm. I like it seems like you have to become part of that person, right? Physically. Yes. Hello. For for like ten minutes, then you gotta eat. <laughs> I don't know. I never had. You, that you, that you become one, and then you you get off. This is what I'm Let talking about. Let her live her right? fantasy. Yeah, go. Yeah. 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 So why do you want? Well, listen. Why do you want to have sex? Try to articulate that. Hormonally. So you have a desire to have an intercourse because you have that urge, a natural body. Yeah, urge. and also because I want to be in love so badly. And there's like okay, this. That's, that, whoa, 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 oh, that's a whole wait, different yeah. thing. Whole different thing. I know, but because because <laughs> you you wanting a sustained relationship with him. May or may not be jeopardized by having sex. <clears throat> no, 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 no. Because I don't have a serious boyfriend. I just have a guy that I have a big crush on that I know will ask me out. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm trying to figure out if he asks me out if I should. Uh, what my no. boundaries? Well, why don't you let him ask you out first? Because I've already said no once. Oh, you said no. And, yeah, I'm trying to figure out if I should like try to get him to ask me again oh. and. Say Wait a minute. That. Hold on a second. I'm okay. just saying, you know, he's going to ask you out. Mm-hmm. He already did. Uh, again. Yeah. Hopefully, if he's resilient. And you know you're attracted to him, so why don't you just go out with him, say yes, and go out with him. Date and for a be- while. Begin See, a yeah. dating relationship. And I shouldn't just, you know. No. I should keep my virginity. For a while. Yeah. Until yeah. so you're sure you got a relationship. Over yeah. under on her virginity you're, you're, is uh, noon tomorrow, by the way. I, as <laughs> I said, explode. tied all in with your desire to have sex is this desire to have a relationship and to be in love. Trust me, this guy's desire is to have sex only. And he, may, and he may, it is true. And he but may weren't, walk weren't away. Were you in love when you were younger and just want to be with a girl? You yeah, weren't. He was in love with about 30 candy stripers at, uh, once when he was at County USC. The fact is, though, you first have to establish the relationship. If you think it's that if he has sex with you, that somehow he's going to have the same experience and the same motivations as you, that's wrong. Wow. It's not going to be true. She's going to explode with passion, this one. She's like, yeah. Oh. What's, what's your name, miss? She's, uh, yeah. What's, what's Dave out there, Yvonne? <laughs> Yvonne, listen, this is not an episode of the OC, all right? This is the yeah. real world. That's right, relax. Right? It's not going to be love and slow-mo and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's going to be like, have you ever been to the zoo? <laughs> <laughs> like two chimps going at it. So, honey, so don't, yeah. maybe don't get too, uh, to you, maybe you reptiles. Have you ever heard Enrique Iglesias? Yes. Okay, yes. so there's a song, it's so beautiful. All right, all right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Look, and by the way, this, this could be this is one of those chicks that kind of uh, could freak you out. Oh, it's like your yeah. hand slips down her panties, and she goes, <laughs> yeah. and it's like you're you're thinking, I'm glad she likes it, but there's a point to which she should like it. Now, once they pass that, it becomes creepy because it's not real. It's just some sort of weird. Well, it, it is whatever it is. Yeah, maybe it isn't real, yeah. but it, whatever it is, it freaks you out. So, like, you want to keep going, but on the other hand, she's you don't just getting all weird you, because you know you're not that. No, you're not the prince charming that she seems to be imagining you to be. You're some guy is groping I'm just around. Talking about the crazy chick when you touch her. And <laughs> is, is this wrong to ask? But. Uh, Alicia, how far have you gone with a with a boy? Wait a minute, that's Yvonne. Alicia's oh, coming in tomorrow Sorry. night, but I'll ask her what base she's gotten to. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not getting to any base ever. I'm scared to hold hands. Oh, so then there you go. You got to build right. up to it. All right, just take but, it slow. To date it a okay nice, to... okay. It's, o- it's okay yeah, to date kiss. The guy. Yes. Kiss yeah, the guy. Date the guy. Kiss him. Right. Hold him. Fantastic. Touch him. That's it. That's right. Don't give him the whole store. Let him, sh- you know. Yeah. Give him some. Right. Some to work toward. Eric. Hey, what's up? You're 17. Yeah. Wait, Eric, before you go on, one, one more word of advice to Yvonne. Saying no, not going to be interpreted as a good thing by these guys. What do you mean? You know what I mean? She's, well, I'll have to make him play a game or, or pursue oh, me. He's like, no, 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 cut it out. Oh, you mean the, um, is she, he already asked her out yes. she said no? That was a bad move. Hopefully he'll be resilient, as Adam said, and he'll be back. But don't Drew, I, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'll open it to uh, Dave and Drew. Have you ever asked a girl out for a second time that no. shuts you down? No. Now... No, me, uh, me neither. Now, Dave, there, Dave no, have you? No, now, but then stalking kicks in. So there you go. Right. You and yeah. he's actually it's always that. Dave will oftentimes stalk initially and then move to asking out. <laughs> well, then I know her. Then it seems like we have a lot more in common. Right. I know what she does every day at three fifteen. <laughs> he knows her schedule. <laughs> he's been reading, masturbating to her diary feverishly, which she stole from her apartment. But but here's the thing too, like. Once now you can ask a girl out, go out for a few dates. Then she says, uh, "No fifth date." 
then you'll try to talk her into it. But if you don't even get the first one off, yeah, you're not uh, you're not going to ask again, Eric. Yeah, what's up? Seventeen. Go ahead. Yeah. First of all, love you, Adam. If I was Thank gay, you. I'd have wet dreams about you, but nah. Right. You, see, you know, that's, that's how, no one judges in, in Dream World, by the way. You do what you want uh, to me. Not really. First of all, I have an impression for you, Adam. Uh-oh. You might love it. <laughs> I might love it, and uh, Drew may turn into a, a, a centaur. <laughs> okay, here it goes. What the hell was that? Wait a minute, the phone dropped out we're right when you were doing it. Go ahead. What the hell was that? Okay, now, who was that? It was Peter, Peter Griffin. Oh, it was Peter Grimm from The Family Guy. God. Yeah. That was a great impression, but it, it it's always bad when the person has to ask who it the was impression that, yeah. was. It just wasn't long enough. Was gonna, was we need orientation. Off. Okay. Oh, so, uh, Eric, hang on. Drew decided we don't want to talk to you. <laughs> That's the way I'm going to say it now when I hang Fine. up on people, all right? Uh, there's a question for Dave over here. John? Uh, yeah. Hey. 17? Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? Uh, how you doing? Big fan. Watch oh, thanks. As often as I can. Uh, I wanted to know how you uh, started as a stand-up comedian, or as a comedian. Well, who's this, Mitch Hedberg? <laughs> well, what I, uh, what's your name? I'm sorry, I keep getting the names wrong. I'm not used to this kind of That's call. John, you know, John, I, I give you know, let me, give, let, give Dave a, uh, give him a pen, a pen here. And yeah, do you have an iPod or? You just, just, you just um, sketch. You write Pilot. the person's name down. That's Peter. John. Peter. No, it's John. John. Oh, John. sorry. John. There you go. John, uh, I started pretty much, I think, like uh, 80% of the other comics, which is they tried doing other Harper things. Harper claiming? Yeah, exactly. We weren't good at anything else, and we just started, uh, you know, doing uh, open mics, and, you know, the years pass, the alcohol kicks in, <laughs> bitterness shows up, and next thing you know, you're sitting here on a call-in show. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I uh, went to college. I did all that kind of stuff, and I started in New York, and I've been doing about 17 years. Are you interested in being a comic? Yeah, I'm trying. Really? You got any jokes for us? No, not. Uh, I, I, okay. Judging by John, I think you would say he'd either be a comic or an auctioneer. Just, just that quality. Yeah, of it's voice. a gift. The gift for Gam. <laughs> John. Well, yeah. John, where do you live? Uh, San Jose. San Jose. So go to your local club on open mic night and uh, just try it out, man. That's all you can really do if you're uh, cool interested thing. and serious. Uh, uh, one more question for uh, sure. Doctor Drew. No. Yeah. Um, you know, I heard like earlier. A long time ago, there was a guest that said something about like injecting uh, booze so you wouldn't have to drink it. I mean, yeah, it was uh, Nikki Six. Yeah, most of uh, the Motley Crewers, uh, yeah. mainline Jack Daniels. Yeah, that, like, what what's bad about that? I mean, it should kill you. That's what's bad about what's it. What's bad about it? <laughs> You're putting non-sterile substance directly into your vein. It will stick to your hey, heart uh, valves, cause abscesses. John, it's a bad time. John, yeah. write that one down. You can open with that one. Well, John, you're already thinking like a comic. What's yeah. wrong with being an alcoholic understand. who injects? Are you a, alcohol? are you a drug addict? Uh, no, no, no. Just uh, you smoke pot? Uh, peppermint shots. Okay. Do you right, smoke pot, though? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So okay. I guess no, huh? I'm uh. <laughs> the open mic is a great experience. It with is. The guy, the bitter comic, who uh, yells at yells at all the people. Yeah. And he's like, look, uh, <clears throat> at two and a half minutes. I hit you with the flashlight beam. That means wrap it up. And that doesn't mean wrap it up with a long-winded tail. Uh, <laughs> that means wrap it up with a joke. And then sometimes they get in a commentary. And it'd be nice to say something funny. Right. You know, like, they'll even, like, give me a little... Uh, it, it wouldn't wouldn't call it constructive criticism. i just call it plain criticism. Right. It's just like... And don't and and then once in a while they do that and nobody wants to hear about like, wow <laughs> the guy's constructing my entire act but they'll do it they go <clears throat> we'll shoot the light on you we hit you the flashlight you got thirty seconds wrap it up you don't wrap it up we'll shut the mic you don't wrap it up after we shut the mic we'll attack you with the mic stand <laughs> that doesn't work we'll uh, put an M eighty up your ass and blow you up in front of the crowd it's like oh uh, this is great this sounds like fun I'm glad I invited my friends out it's gonna be great. All right, so you got the number. You'll be uh, 147. It's uh, <laughs> <clears throat> it's 5:30 now. You'll be going yeah. on at uh, well, you'll be going on at 7:30. But Thursday, today's Tuesday, <laughs> so you got about 55 hours before uh, you have to do anything. But you can't leave the club. Oh, it's good times. Those uh, open yeah. mics. <clears throat>
And then there's nobody in the audience except yes. for other comedians who are waiting who to get you. on. Yeah. Because who the hell goes to a comedy club at 6.45 in the evening? Mm -hmm. uh, now, <laughs> later on, at 10 o'clock, the place will be filled up with people who want to see comedy. But no one goes to see the open mics. So there's just a bunch of jealous, bitter, vindictive comics out there who would be goddamn that they're going to laugh at anything you say. All right. It's a good business, though. So. Dave, Dave you Attell, summed it up, man. That's it, right? You did, yeah. Dave Attell uh, here tonight. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Dave Attell, the world's funniest stand-up, oh, is uh, here tonight. No, that is true. Okay. All right. That's true. <laughs> I, uh, there's a handful of guys I like. I like uh, Mitch Hedberg. Yeah, Hedberg. I just work with him. Yeah, he's great. I, I think he got a little screwed up on drugs or something. But uh, uh, Yeah, he had some, uh, some, you know, that's one of the pitfalls of comedy, of course, is the, uh, you know, self-destructiveness. Yeah. It's uh, very hard. Well, it, avoid the alcohol and, of course, drug use. It, it takes later on coke when you can afford it. Yeah, when you can afford it. Yeah. And by the way, I gotta. I've said this to Drew. I gotta get into coke because yeah, really. it's so cheap. Now. When I was doing coke, an eight ball was like three hundred and fifty bucks. And these kids call and they're like, "Yeah, I scored an eight ball. It's like eighty dollars." Yeah, it's a lot. And, I, and I'm like, I gotta get into it now because now I make so much more money than I did before, and coke is so cheap. Do you, you understand? It's it'd be it's it's like it'd be like uh, you know. But now you're too busy to do hardcore drugs. I think, you know? I, I think you can always find time. No, I, I don't know. I, I think that, like, uh, for myself, that's the one thing that keeps me from being a total drug addict, which is uh, I got something to do tomorrow early. Right. You know, whereas in years past, it'd be like, I can kill three days. Do you have any kind of hallucinogenic <laughs> drug? <laughs> right. You know, I have, I have time for acid but, or but something. It is true. <laughs> like, like uh, you are asking college kids to do students to, students to do drugs by giving them, like, three and a half months off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everyone needs a Monday rolling around, a sort of sober reminder mm -hmm. to sort of get up. The alarm's going to go off. you got to get going. When you say, uh, look, it's uh, it's late May. We'll see you uh, middle of September. Uh, let's do the mushrooms. Yeah. It, it, you are sort of, they shouldn't have that much time off, Drew. I'm with you. They should do, uh, they should do like uh, every third day or something or fourth day and just do it that way. What do you think of all around that year-round school? I get summer school yeah. with my kids. Yeah. Unless they have to help with the planting and, and uh, harvesting. That's a plantation. Right. Oh, sorry. All right. <laughs> uh, Julio. Yeah. Speaking of harvesting, what's up there, Julio? Um, I have a question. I've been seeing this girl for uh, going on two years. Um, and um, the, the the thing about it is, it's my brother's wife. He's what? What? Uh, I've been sleeping with my brother's wife for about two years. You sleep with your brother's wife. How old is she? She's um, twenty-five. Yeah, how old's your brother? Excuse me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How, how old is, is your brother? <laughs> my brother's like thirty. No. He's like thirty. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like 30. You know how old your brother is? He's like yeah. 30. Do you, have, uh, do you have nieces and nephews? I have one nephew. One. Hmm? You getting oh. him too? Or is he <laughs> w waiting for him to ripen just a little bit? Yeah. All right. And this has been going on for two years? Uh, since you were going on two years. Since you were two 16? Years. Yeah. All right. Well. It started when I was working with her. I worked with her, and that's how it started. You guys well, were working work, at work. What kind of work were you doing? Oh, um, we were going to guess. A we worked at a retirement center. Oh, okay. Retirement what center. What were you doing there? He was in charge uh, of Jella. <laughs> no, I was a, I was a cook. I was a, I was a dietary aide. She was a prep cook. Oh. Let me explain dietary aide. You see that sack <laughs> of potatoes? <laughs> well? Yeah. Why don't you get them down? <laughs> dietary aide. So let's hear a little more about it. Hey, one, the, one of the geezers vomited. Uh, why don't you get that there? <laughs> dietary aide. All right. Is she a drug addict, Julio? No. Alcoholic? No. She hardly ever drinks. I drink every once in a while. Why would you think a 23-year-old be having sex with a 16-year-old, especially a family member? Excuse me? All right. Okay. Hold on a second. Stop asking Julio questions. <laughs> He's got to focus on dying. Uh, <clears throat> what do you think of this whole Atkins thing, by the way, Julio? What do you mean? Atkins, healthy? Uh, health, healthy or, or, or should we just uh, moderation mixed <laughs> with exercise? Or South Beach? Um, I don't understand what you're saying. All right. I don't understand what you're asking. All right. Uh, anyway, um, 
You're uh, you've been having sex with her since sixteen. How often do you have sex with her? Um, I don't know, but maybe almost every day. At work? It's like no, I I quit my job like um, I don't know, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm, really? She comes right. over it almost every day to my house. Almost every day. Your house? You live by yourself? No, I live with my parents. Where are your parents when she comes over? Uh, well, what? Their work. Where are your parents when she comes over? Actually, um, well, they both come over and we just like sneak away. They both come over? Yeah. Their parents? It's her brother's wife. I mean, they're always over here. So when your brother's in the other room, you quickly have sex with her? Like a threes company? Kinda? Yeah, like a little quick. Yeah, or no. something else will happen. I mean, it all no. depends. No. Well, wait a minute. I kind of believe it. Now, uh, what do you use for protection? What What if you get her pregnant? Uh, you know what? She's been pregnant like, well, I don't know, five, six times for me. And um, really? she, it's, it's, she just had surgery, so she's, um, she doesn't have a strong uterus, so she always has a miscarriage. Ooh. Yeah. I'd like to find a chick with, yeah. a, with a trick uterus. And her dietary knowledge. What more do you need? <laughs> she got, <laughs> shut up. Can't shut she eat more fiber and build up the uteri? <laughs> <laughs> well, Julio's her man. Wow. What do you think of that Atkins, huh? I don't think he could have thought that one up. Oh, Julio? No. Julio's been putting hoagies in blenders for the last two years. He doesn't know anything. He's deaf. All right. We got to take a break. We got to take a break. But we'll Julio. get back to Julio. No, because we have, uh, we have struck a, 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 a vein yes. of yes. crap yes. that is tur we're going to turn into gold. Mm. I don't know about gold. Dave Attell here. Uh, Julio, hang tight. We'll get to the bottom of this after this. Hey, everybody. It's the Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Alicia Cuthbert is going to be in here tomorrow night. The uh, hottie with the cleft in her chin from uh, the girl next door. Dave Attell in tonight from uh, Comedy Central's uh, Insomniac. And uh, one of the hottest stand-up comedians working working today. I don't know if you want to call him hot, but funniest. I do the job. He does the <laughs> job. He gets the job done. Yeah. And how, uh, how you can uh, put together an hour worth of material is, is beyond Mind me. Mind-boggling, yeah. Just remember it. I mean, yeah. How how does that work? Uh, how much does it's, the it's, set vary from night to night? Uh, well, with me, I like to keep it loose, but it seems that I this uh, fall, whatever it was, last fall or whatever, I was on tour with Lewis Black, and he's a he's a great comic. You might know him from the Daily Show, and sure. he, um, you know, he's very uh, political and emotional and everything, and he. Had a, had had a really great act. You can, I think he's doing a, a HBO uh, hour. Should be out sometime in the next couple of months. So you can really see like what an hour looks like of stand up. And uh, for me, I'm more more of a joke teller. You know, like one joke at a time, and that's how you kind of build an hour. You just get jokes, and if they have to do the same thing, then you try and connect them into a bit or a hunk or a chunk, whatever you call it. And before you know it, you got a you know hour of stuff. And how, how many jokes do you think you tell? Do you have any idea? How many are good? Um, well, no. <laughs> I, I know I know that answer. But <laughs> but in an hour, do you tell 33 jokes? Do you, how many, you know, I, and I know you don't quantify it that way, but do you have a ballpark estimate? Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it would be coming up on 100 because wow. my stuff is pretty short. You know, I try and get to it quickly. That's kind of a New York thing where you, you get to the punchline because people are usually screaming, you suck, and... You right. get off, so you try and get to the funny as quick as you can. Out here, people are a little bit more laid back. You have more time, but I'd say around 100, you wow. know, around 100 jokes, give or take, uh, you know, midget thing here and there. Drew, you've, uh, you're uh, in, a, in your life. What are you up to? Uh, 22, 23 you know, jokes? Tally, I think we're up in the 20s, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Drew, so it's been a lifetime. They weren't all funny, though. Right? No, but... Some are ironic. Yeah, but you're, you're a doctor, so it's, it's funny. Sorry, it's like they lowered the bar for me. Yeah, it's like yeah. when these retired ball players go up into the booth and uh, it's more like the, the Special Olympics. The really. funniest <laughs> guy. They should have. Oh, they should have stand up comedy Special, Special Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that, yeah. It'd be great. Yeah, it'd be like uh, what's her name's uh, friend on uh, <laughs> Facts of Life. Yeah, yeah, Blair. Ooh. Yeah, oh. Blair's friend. She had that uh, retarded friend that told jokes. Oh, oh yeah. At, uh, you don't see much of that anymore, but it's always funny. Well, occasionally you'll catch a comic with like a palsied hand or. You know, just some kind of uh, weird oddity where you see that humor has been how they've handled it. Yeah. Now the rest of us awkwardly have to kind of deal with it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it attracts all types. <laughs> yeah, well, it takes, all, it takes, all, it takes kinds. all kinds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. A lot of lazy-eyed guys. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, Julio, back to yeah. the uh, saga known as uh, so Julio. So you've been dating, you've been sleeping daily with your brother's wife, pregnant multiple times, yet she's had a spontaneous abortion or miscarriage. Spastic uterus. A Kid never in, made incompetent it. cervix, they call it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you're continuing to carry on this way with this nutball. Uh, well, um, I, I just need to know if I should leave her now. You leave her? Well, it's hard, to leave, go? hard to leave people that are married, if well, you really think a, about I mean, it. Well, I'm in love with her. I, I, okay. I, I, I know I am. But... Yeah. I well, know, you, why don't you yeah. sacrifice that for the, the uh, sort of well-being of your entire family? Stop doing this. It does kind of make you wonder what kind of gal she might be. Oh, yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. secondly, oh. what kind of mother she may be to her child. Uh, how old's the nephew? Um, five. Uh... Do you hate your brother? I mean, to do that to your brother? I mean, you know what? Did he not um, let you play with stuff or something? And now you need no, to do with everything no, he has? No, it wasn't like that. I just, um, after years went by, I mean, I, I used to like Ronald Small. And, um, I don't know, after years he got with her, and I mean, I hated him for that. Oh, you was with her before they got no, married? Was, or? No, no, I wasn't. I wanted to. I was, I was really small. And um, I wanted her, but I never got her. And I hated him for getting her. Uh, I see. Dave, uh, yeah. by the way, Dave's like uh, almost every guy I talk to behind a counter. Julio, you mean? I mean, uh, Julio, sorry, Dave. <laughs> but there's a bit of Dave in here. Yeah. Well, the attitude is Dave, yeah. but the vocabulary is more Julio. Like, I never know <laughs> what they're talking about. Okay. So what's the answer? Stop it. Stop it. Can you it, please yeah. stop Absolutely, it? Absolutely, Julio. Stop it. But, and this but is going to blow up. And, and I'm, I'm just, just from... I, you know, I may be jumping to conclusions, but Julio seems like he comes from the kind of family that if the brother found out, he him. would stab him with a sprinkler key mm-hmm. moments and, and after he found out. on the lawn. Yes. And Julio only starts to make sense to me if he's got sort of a psychotic process about him, like if he hears voices and things. You know what I mean? It just doesn't... He's not really connected. Yeah. I think the most reality. dangerous uh, voice Julio could hear would be his own at this point. Yeah. If he heard someone else's, it would probably be a help. Julio? Yeah. Okay, so... We're asking you to stop because this thing's going to blow up. Yeah, it is. I know it is. You will get popped. Do you have any other any medical problems, Julio? No, I don't. You ever been in a hospital for any reason? Um, no, I just broke my knee, but that was it. Yeah, no mental hospital stuff? No, no, no. Okay. It doesn't well, mean he didn't need it. What would you think if you were in your brother's place and you just found out your brother was banging your wife for how long? Two years. Two years? Uh, yeah, going on two years. Yeah, what, what, what would you, you think do? if he came to you and said that? And... Well, I won't go to him and tell him anything, but if right. he did, I mean, but I'd probably He'd be more than pissed off. You'd hate him. Wait, you'd feel, wait, wait, and if he does like, find out... Putting something together. Did he do something to you when you were growing up? No, he didn't. Huh? Huh? Sexually? Is that what you're saying, Drew? No. No. Okay. Huh? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, listen, Kreskin, who cares? What? Because of what kind of guy would marry that kind of woman? Uh, and what kind of situation uh, would create Julio's hatred for his listen, brother? Listen, I'm just, I'm going to send her uh, incompetent uterus a windbreaker. Because uh, I really, that's the hero of the whole story. If, there, yes. if, there, if there's any light at the end of the Julio tunnel, it's her incompetent uterus. Yes, Drew? Absolutely. Because otherwise, they'd have 30 kids. And, and no one would know it. And by the way... Uh, well, let's see, DNA. No, they'd have to be twins for the DNA to match up. They could do a DNA test. But the kid would all look like the brother, obviously, who yeah. comes from uh, the same place Julio does. Shush. All right, let's just stop it. And if she does, if he does ever find out, don't say two years. Say 18 months. <laughs> Softens the blow just a little bit. Eric? Yeah, sorry about that. Wasting your time, guys. Oh, that's all right. Oh, that's my question. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I have a girlfriend, and she's a little loose for my taste, and we haven't done nothing, and she says she hasn't done nothing, or she doesn't masturbate. And she goes, oh, it's my gynecologist. He does, like, these tests where one of them where he has a little plastic thing, and he puts it in there and opens it up and takes wipes or something like that. Yeah, it's I called a pelvic that. exam, Eric. That's what every woman gets. <laughs> it, Eric wasn't born yesterday. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So it, that would happen for young girls. Every it, woman gets what? that every year. Oh. Oh. What what are you getting at, Eric? No, but, like, I don't know, can a gynecologist make some girl that loose? Like, my hands are pretty big, and I can almost fit my whole fist in there. No way. Shut up. <laughs> Bogus. All right, listen. Put your fist in your mouth, would you? But, uh, and don't do it slowly. Have it get a uh, uh, running start at your mouth before it goes in, all right? My face. Yes. Well, 
<laughs> Open your mouth wide enough, you'll be fine. So, all right, listen, he's a jackass. Well, wait, I don't get it. So he's upset that she. She's bogus, can, bogus. That's a bogus yeah. call. But yeah. we we do have plenty of stupid guys who think that the woman is cheating or not a virgin because yeah. she's not tight enough down right. there. For his, oh, his, yeah. oh, for his taste. For his taste, exactly. Right. Which is ridiculous. And right. Right. That right. wouldn't be Michael Jackson's taste, right? No. That tight. No, no. no. different okay. type. Okay. Different area. Yeah. Yeah. Mandy? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Mandy, you're 18. Yeah. What's up? Um, okay, I was going out with this guy for like a year, and we got into the rough sex thing, and we got into asphyxiation, where he mm -hmm. choked me. Yeah. Right. Um, now, we broke up. Now I'm with this new guy, and I can't orgasm unless I'm choked. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, you you don't want to tell him to do well, it. N well, I, I've talked to him about it, but he doesn't feel comfortable doing it because he feels that he can hurt me. You don't believe that he can? Well, I mean, I know that he can, but I know my limits also. Yeah. What are your limits? My limits? Yeah, how do you know what your limits are when you're unconscious? Well, she well, has. A, I, I'm not right, unconscious. Right. It's just almost to that point, and then it's. Yeah. She has, they have a safe word. It's it's. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm choking you death. <laughs> That's the safe word. You understand? Part of the problem is that the blood supply to the brain gets cut off when you when you hold the carotids down, and you can go out and be dead in seconds. Are you a real doctor, just a love doctor, <laughs> right? right, Mandy? Yeah. That's how well, people I die. Mean, of, people die of this. I've seen many patients die of this. Yes. Many, many. Okay, so how do I get out of not doing it anymore then? Just f focus on other means of being close and having organ. Were you, were you abused or something? Is that, is that in your past? No. Nothing? You have no no one hit no. you? You no. just stumbled? I, mean, I, was I was spanked as a child, but I mean not abused. Yeah. Did, they, did they hit you with an object? No. And did they do this often? Only when I was bad. Did they do this often? Um, no, I wasn't. I wasn't a bad kid. I went to yeah. private school, and they spanked oh. us. Uh -huh. Aha! They, they spanked, spanked us school? with, with uh, you know, those paddles. Oh my God! Oh, really? Is She's eighteen. Wow! I mean, this is uh, nice. she's she's like seventy-eight. Like yeah. Expect her to be like seventy-eight or something to say. She went to private school <laughs> in two thousand and one. Like you know? Thing. No, oh, like what? it was more like kindergarten through like third grade. That's incredible. You should report Still, that, that was place. like 1996. That's against okay. the law. No, yeah. it's not because the parents signed a waiver. It's oh. against the law, Mandy. Waiver or not, you can't do that. Because I, in fact, I was thinking the other day, you know, how, my dad used uh, to ask for that waiver and then say no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking we don't about today how how kids, uh, you know, physical abuse has such a profound effect on kids' development, mm -hmm. and how parents go, well, I, you know, I, I do that with my kids. It's discipline, all this kind of crap. And then I think to myself. Really, would you, would you walk down the street and you smack a kid who just a little out of line? You smack any somebody else's kid or some kid who's standing in line? You, you smack them? That's yeah. okay? No, only your own kids. Yeah. It's, really, it's so bizarre. It's so ridiculous. <clears throat> hey, um, so, Mandy, yes, that, that's where some of this need for the high arousal comes from. But here, here's the thing. I, I, and and, and tell, tell me what you think of this. I feel like she's 18. The last guy she was with was... Uh, 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 the Boston Strangler, mm -hmm. and if she keeps going down this road, pretty soon she's going to be, you know, hanging in a clown outfit. She needs to real now. Now you've come to a crossroads. You're with, the, you with a steady guy who doesn't want to choke the, the life out of you while he's banging the bejesus out of you. How about you just uh, go down his path and not get choked? But it's I. It, I don't get anything out of it. You get it's nothing. To the point right now where I don't even want to have sex with him because I don't get anything out of it. What, what about oral sex? I don't. I I don't get off on oral sex. How about anal? Mm, I've never tried that. Not oh, so you'll be choked to yeah. death, but you won't take yeah. the trip up the Hershey. Well, la di da. Well, there I, we I go, Mr. Rough that's Sex exit Play. Only. I figure that's. Exit oh, real? Okay, so. but you're allowed to be strangled. Now, you come know, on. A, that's a tall order. Is <laughs> is a um, uh, sixty nine strangling. You ever do that? I have to use my feet to strangle the woman. It's like a James Bond uh, <laughs> sixty nine strangling. Well, yeah. no, you take it. You take a, a noose and you you. I uh, do that. You push it with your feet. Yeah. All right, All right Mandy. There's something screwed up about you, baby doll. Really, it's very very seriously, and, Mandy. And and here's what we're ask. Here's what we're asking. We're asking all of you to do this. Uh, instead of being screwed up and saying, "Hey, but that's my thing," how about saying, "Hey, you're screwed up." 
Better do something about maybe it. There's, maybe there's an opportunity to stop this. I yeah. mean, like anything. Like if you're doing heroin, it's not, hey, that's my thing. It's, no, you're a junkie, and you should yeah. probably quit. That's right. If you uh, want to F uh, five-year-old boys, it's not, hey, that's my thing. It's, no, you better stop. And the same is true with this before you expire, which could happen easily. Right. Uh, you need to, any any fetish for that matter really is just primarily and then, to, to create profound levels of arousal because you've had those arousal systems burned out or unwired by the extreme yeah. abuse or the, the, the mis, you know, unfortunate experiences in childhood. And also to distance yourself from the other person. You notice how you're seeing she's Not so intimate. angry and demeaning and the other right. guy because God forbid he's trying to be intimate with. And her. then think about the poor guy too. He kills you. Yeah. And yeah. then it's that scene from a movie where it's like, should I call the cops? They'll never yeah. believe me. I got a couple of priors. I got a barrier in a shallow grave. You know. Then the cops come sniffing around and they find uh, your scarf on it on the mm. nightstand and they, they always suspect. And next thing you know, they end up digging. To, now the guy's doing hard time. All, all, and then, and then <laughs> what happens in court is your parents have to show up because they want this guy put away forever. And then the details start coming out. That look, she told me that unless I was uh, finger blasting her and strangling her, that she. Right. And then the parents just are tearing up, and it's like she begged me to do it to her. She wanted me to call her a slut and flog her with my penis. Your mom is now broken down into tears. Mm. Your dad's got a shotgun in his mouth. And who's the only winner? Ed Harris. He That's gets right. to play your dad in, in the, the movie. movie. Yeah, when they so do. So if the you want to give Ed Harris work, then you just keep it going, girl. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Bill, it's true. <laughs> That's how Ed gets his work. <laughs> and Jeremy Piven will get work too. Not not because of the type. Not because be the it, friend. it's just he's in yeah. every other movie. Right. So there's a 50, 50, 50 shot. He's going to be in this production mm -hmm. too. Bill, yeah, you're twenty three. I, I got a question for David. Here What's he up, is. sir? Yeah, you did a bit a uh, while ago about uh, you rode around. I think it was with uh, Miami uh, uh, Sheriff SWAT team. Yes, sir. And you and you guys were uh, shooting uh, groundhogs. Nutria, that's what they call them. Oh, okay. oh Nutria. Mm -hmm. These are rats. The big they're rats. a rat out of uh, South America that have uh, been brought to the uh, states, and they're in the south, Louisiana. and they kind of get into the uh, yeah Louisiana. Yeah. yeah, they get into the whole you know the screwing that stuff up. A, that was a great bit. Did you guys catch any flack for that? No, you know what? We did that before this whole nine eleven thing, and. Uh, uh, we got we got some stuff from PETA, I guess, because we did yeah, actually yeah. shoot rats. So yeah. if that's what you're saying for flack, but, but I don't really care. I mean, it's something the police do. So the, the yeah. Nutria, yeah. they, they Thanks, pay Bill. them for they yeah, pay them, they pay them like a bucket Nutria. head or something. Well, what they did originally was set poison, like for rats, like in New York City in the subways, they'll throw down some poison. But dogs and cats were eating it, and and whatever native uh, Species, animals. Right. Yeah. So they said this is the best way to you know take it out. And uh, it was cool that they let us hang with them. And the thing about uh, the Nutria, by the way, which is a, just a creepy name because it seems it sounds like a diet shake, but uh, I had the entire Nutria discussion with two guys sub last night at dinner. Particle, neutrino. <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they, uh, I guess the guy, is, is, and, and Dave probably knows more than I do, but uh, he stopped me if I'm wrong, but I, I think the Tabasco guy brought Nutria in around, uh, I don't know, the early 19-somethings, he was going to harvest their fur. Right. And right. Uh, and make coats or whatever out of them. And then a big uh, a typhoon or something blew hurricane. through, mm -hmm. hurricane blew through, knocked over all the cages, and all the Nutria got loose, and then just started uh, multiplying out in the wilderness. And now you got this species that, sh I, I don't know where it's from, but I, I know it's not Holland. <laughs> it's always it's always it's always from Africa right. or or it's South, South America, America. Yeah. yeah South America or Africa by the way is is that all we need to know about those two continents by the way all the evil vermin <laughs> come from there the bees everything's bad that comes it all, gets over, it all gets over here yeah everything's a killer over there by the way it's like Florida like <laughs> everything is big and mean and venomous yeah. and stuff like like you got a snake that comes from uh, California eh, it's fine eh, it's just a garden snake you get one that comes from Africa or South America, it'll it'll kill it'll your kill family. You. It'll spit yeah. stuff at you that kills you. But yeah, yeah, it shoots you in the eye, blinds you, then what, it rapes you, it? then it kills you. What is it about south of the equator that, that makes all that happen? Stuff you know gets I mean? like big crazy and mean. Yeah, but why not? It's just the, the same heat. distance, just one south, one's north. What, what difference does it make? Uh, I, uh, I don't know. I believe God had a plan <laughs> that had to do with the equator, or he wouldn't have invented the equator. 
And uh, it makes you feel like the cougar, which is a big thing. You know, like, oh, the cougar's going to attack. At least right. it doesn't crawl up your urethra and, you know, right. get into your brain and make right. you go insane, you know. Right. Every, everything is just uh, big and scary and evil. And and they, they get over here on some cargo ship or some entrepreneur <laughs> brings them over. And then they breed them. And then the next thing you know, we got a bunch of slack jaw guys just uh, shooting at them. But you could spend uh, a worse night than uh, going out and shooting at Nutria. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, Are, did they, I really did feel like I was doing something. Uh -huh. Do they respond to the light, or how do you? They have a guy. What they do is you get on the back of a flatbed truck, and they use, I guess, twenty twos, and it's the SWAT team, so they know how to shoot, you know. Right. And they're using like a low powered, uh, you know, I guess, weapon, so it's not going to go ricochet everywhere. Yeah, it's stuff. not going to go ricocheting around. And they go around through the levees and the dikes, and they uh, they do like one man man's the flashlight, and the other guy's the shooter. So right. it's cool seeing the whole, you know, you know, take them out. Kind of thing, and and how big are they? They look like big rats, or what do they look like? They're huge. Yeah, they're probably like forty, fifty pounds. Uh, wow, big no. teeth, and they might 40, carry leprosy. 50, yeah, forty, fifty pounds. Yeah, they're big. They're huge. They, they like swim. a dog. Yeah, they, I, they eat. I guess they're um. What is it? They eat everything. Omnivores. Omnivores. So they, you know, they eat everything. They're garbage. You know, <laughs> that, <laughs> forty, like fifty pounds. Yay big. Yeah, they stink. Wow. True. Great radio, by the way. Yay? Yay, babe? No, smaller. Yay? Yeah, yeah. True. Does anyone know what yay is? <laughs> I, I would have just, just I'll describe it to him if they'd like to hear. Drew is, when he says yay. That's like three feet across, yeah? Yeah, he's, well, he's that's a little less. But he, a medium-sized dog. Yes? Yeah. Yay. Okay. But I don't think we could do it now because of the whole terror and, you know, everything like, is security. We need the SWAT team. You need the SWAT team watching the airports. Uh, it's got to be bad, yeah, because you got a hostage situation in town, and these guys are all at, at, drinking at the bog. Maybe the nutrient could nutrient. solve our terrorist problems. They set well, up in Afghanistan. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of flatbeds with the... You know what so we need to do? Dump some nutrient over there. do with some of these countries is start exporting some of our crappy things yes. over there. You know what I mean? Let them I'm for that. Because I, I, I swear to you, I think everything that's bad that's on this soil was brought in from somewhere. And say, so here are the choices: Africa, Mexico, South America. It's all anything. You know, here's what we had before this: uh, butterflies. That's all we had: hummingbirds, <laughs> hummingbirds and butterflies, yeah. hummingbirds, raccoons, the bald and butterflies. eagle. Yeah. We had kittens. They never even matured to full cats. We had kittens. <laughs> Hummingbirds and butterflies and yes, bald eagles. That's Raccoon. all we had. Raccoon. And then the scorpions and the roaches and the venomous uh, uh, snakes and the nutria. They all came in from other countries. This is why we need that fence I've been talking about for a long time. <laughs> all right, David. Not our David. This David. David, you're 17. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 17. Oh man, oh, are you man. high? What is it? Huh? It's, it's it's night of the Hesher. Yeah. Just, what's the matter? Are you smoking a lot of weed? No, uh, a lot of people pass it off that I smoke a lot of weed, but, but I don't smoke weed. All right. You had a head injury? Uh, no. All right. Well, it's uh, time to either start smoking weed or hit yourself in the head with something. Or, or, or go ahead and uh, speak up. All right. Put it together, buddy. What's going on? Well, like, I've been dating a girl for uh, six months now. We're going on our seventh month, and the thing is, is like, I've liked her for about two, three years. I've known her since I was a sophomore. We both kind of had the thing going on with each other. And, like, the thing is that, like, she kind of screwed me over, so we didn't date, and now we're dating now. And, like, the thing is that, like, we both are, like, after each other. I mean, we both like each other. We both love each other. We both have What's your question? What's your the question? Thing is, the thing is, is that, like, I mean, she, she, she's, like, okay, we were having sex and stuff, and all of a sudden she just, like, put a wall there, and she just, like, stopped it, and she's, like... No more sex. And I was like, why? And the thing is, it's questioning me because, like, the thing is, she still wants to. It's weird because, like, she, hmm. she still right. gives me head and she, like, right. still wants to do sexual things. Yeah. And then she says that she doesn't. And all of a sudden she does. And then now she won't have sex. And, like, every right. time. Hold I'm on a second. How come the more boring you are, the more backstory we get? You know, the really exciting people, they don't want to talk about their three tours in Nam. They just want to get to the question. These guys, the, 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 the uh, Hesher High Schoolers, we've got to get the whole backstory about how they uh, met when they were 13. Okay. She, her stopping sex... It has it, nothing to do with him. It, it, here's what it could mean. It's, it possibly means that she's seeing somebody else. Possibly. Sometimes possibly. they'll do that. Yeah, that's possible. More than that, it just means she's is ambivalent about being sexually active. David? And, but the thing is, that, like, she doesn't... I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. Because, like, she's really active with me, but she doesn't have sex with me. All right. But, but she has, though. She has. 
Yeah, she's had sex with me. Like, for it's, the longest time, we had sex, like, for two months straight. Has like, she I made mean, any attempt to explain to you why she's doing this? Well, like, the thing is, like, she says that she doesn't want any sexual contact with me. And then why? the thing no. is that... She wants why, to be your friend now. David, why? <laughs> because, I, I don't know. And then, like, all of a sudden, now she's wanting to give me head, and then, like, she has these weird, like, kinky sex things, but she doesn't want to have sex. And she says David, to me that... David, David, have yeah. you asked her why she's doing this? Yeah, and then she says something to me, but then she goes completely to the opposite. David, of what she's saying. Hey, what, David what, let me, what? hold on. Let me give you a tip, David. Yeah. Forget about your last year of high school. You go right to junior college. Yeah. I want you. To, I want you to actually just drop out and go to junior college now. Yeah. Why? Well, let's forego your senior year. Like, here's what I'm saying: a great athlete at the college at the collegiate level, go well, right. He'll go okay. right into the pros. So David's a perfect. David is that for junior college. Yes. He is a phenom. Yes. A he junior he college needs phenom. to leave high school early because he's just wasting his time there. Go straight he, to he's, junior he's college. He's a poster child for junior college experiences. That's right. He's like LeBron James of stupid. Either that or he's deaf. He oh. actually can't hear. Okay. David. Yeah? When she tells you what her reason is for stopping sexual contact, what does she say? Nothing. That's exactly what she says. She just says, All I right. just don't want to have it. And she's like, there's no, there's nothing. That's, that's okay. it. She just says, that's well, it. I, this isn't a good sign. It prob Here's the deal. She's going to have to tell you or you're going to have to break up. And I that's wonder right. if she even thinks you're her boyfriend. Well, she may just think you guys are dating. Well, the thing is, I, I just don't understand. It's, just, it's really frustrating because, like. Yeah, I know. Okay. And uh, by the way, for all we know. Dave is talking to a mop with a sweater. Yeah. You know, we don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah. Dave could have been talking to, like, a trash can with lipstick yeah. and, a, and a mop wig on it the whole time and thinks he has a, a relationship going. Yeah, yeah. We'll never know. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, this is not a good sign. No. If she's pulling back for one reason or another. And, uh, and you deserve an explanation. If she won't give you one, you must break up. Fine. And uh, Dave, like I said, at junior college, you're going to meet all sorts of uh, hot women in their 40s. <laughs> Especially if you have a car. Chain smoking. <laughs> who still, by the way, junior college, even though there will be women in their 40s, still impressed if a guy has his own ride. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. Let's uh, take a little break. Uh, Dave Attell is here tonight from Insomniac, Comedy Central, every single night of the week. Take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Love line, I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Alicia Cuthbert. Or maybe Alicia Cuthbert. We'll find out tomorrow. It's going to be in here tomorrow night. Hot, cleft, chinned lassie from uh, the uh, girl next door. Tomorrow night, she'll be in here. Very hot. Petite. But I like that. Yes? Dave? Well, how petite are we talking about? About three. Three. Three feet tall? Three feet. Mm. Sporty, though. Tight. Yeah. It's so deceiving on TV. Yeah, I... Uh, it's like you with a snow globe, Adam. I like... Uh, that was my plan, whereas I actually, once in a while, put my uh, semi-erect penis onto a <laughs> snow globe that'll have a small mm. town on it, and I'll, like, smash into it as if it's being crushed by a giant <laughs> penis, which is mine. It's sort of like that... that uh, a thing where you can hold your hand up in front of an airplane that's uh, hundreds of miles yeah. away, and it looks yeah. like, yeah, well, it's, I'm covering it by my hand, you know? <laughs> it's a feeling of satisfaction only a man could have. <laughs> only a mature man like myself. All right, David Tell here tonight from uh, Insomniac. The uh, show's a uh, runaway hit on uh, Comedy <laughs> Central. <laughs> well, uh, listen, it's doing well. It is. It, uh, it absolutely is. It, uh, it fills a need there. It absolutely does, and yeah. it was a very it, it, it was a very good idea for show in the sense that it took somebody and it you know what you know what happens a lot, and I'm sure uh, Dave will uh, back me up on this. Uh, guys are successful stand-up comedians, and they're great, and then they take them and they put them on network, and they try to mash them into some sort right. of sitcom, and then it's like, what happened? That guy used to be funny. Well, it's like. He can't do what he's doing. All of a sudden, he's got a wife and kids and a kooky neighbor and a mother-in-law he doesn't get in, uh, doesn't get along with, and it's in trouble. Dave, they gave him a camera crew and a uh, bottle of rye, <laughs> and they just uh, <laughs> sent him to Louisiana, and that was it. And uh, it, that's so true, especially with these sitcoms. You know, they always come out, and it's like these... Uh 
these comics who were in the clubs, they were kind of edgy. They, they just, you know, like had something to say, and then they put them in the sitcom, and it's it's just a, you know, a single father doing the best he can. And, right. You know, where's the right. boring? Where's the out-of-control drinking? <laughs> Precocious, <laughs> yeah. black five-year-old who yeah. uh, wants to get dad laid by setting him up with, mm -hmm. uh, her pre with his preschool teacher. I always like that. I, I love the premise of the six-year-old that once is trying to yeah. set up single dad. Like I didn't, I didn't know my dad had a penis until I was thirty. Like I wasn't worried about my single dad. My dad was single when I was, you know, ten years old. I wasn't like, I gotta get dad laid. I was like, I gotta get dad to buy me a big wheel. I don't care what what, what else he does. I love that. It's like she is fine, and and the kid tricks the the teacher into coming home, yeah. and then tricks dad into coming home, and then sets up a romantic evening for them. What happened to the Mrs. Livingston character, though? Right. Oh, Mrs. Eddie's father, Mr. Eddie's father. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they had to, Mrs. Livingston was a key character in all of those. She was a hot Asian chick. Yeah, what was the connection there? Did did she they was meet? The housekeeper. I know, but did did he like meet her somewhere overseas? Or he bought her. He bought her in yeah. the um in a in a game of uh, mahjong. <laughs> <laughs> he won her Pai Gao. celebrity Marjan. He won her in a, a Pai Gao tournament in Bangkok and oh. uh, actually smuggled her back stateside. Uh -huh. And now she's basically an uh, indentured servant mm. to the sun. Yeah, Mr. Eddie's father. I like that. <laughs> All right, let's uh, get back to the phones. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is bad already. Maria? Yes. You're 26? Yes. Ooh. You sound like you've uh, had more years than 26 under your belt. I'm sorry? Have you had some hard living? Yeah. Yeah? You've been, wait, you've been like into speed or alcoholic? <laughs> what happened? Oh, no, you got raped? No, no, none of that. I mean, I, I don't do drugs. I've never, I really, I've never really done drugs. The first right. time I ever smoked weed was when I was 25. So. Wow. All right. I well, it's time to that. start with the drugs. So what's I your question? My question is, is that I've been dating this guy for the past, since, since, I'm sorry, since January. And at first, our, like, sex life was fine. He's 20, he just turned 23, I'm 26 years old. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, like, now he can't keep it, like, he can't get it hard. Like, we do foreplay and everything, and all of a sudden, when it's time for, like, us to actually have sex, he can't get it hard. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I have no idea. And, I mean, he smokes out a lot, and some of my friends say, oh, maybe because he smokes out a lot. That absolutely, can, that absolutely yeah, can do it. Is he on any medication? No, uh, not that I know of. I mean, he does a lot. Like he takes, um, he takes me uh, not medication, but he takes like um, things to make him like because he works out a lot. So he wants to build muscle. So he takes a lot of those, whatever they're mm -hmm. called. Yeah. Steroids? Not steroids. I don't, not at all. But you know, he takes supplements. All right, hold on a second. I'm Drew. I'm picturing yeah. the guy in the tiger stripe purple workout parachute pants and the leather with the fanny pack. Leather fanny pack. Yeah. Maybe a hat on backwards. Yeah, and the ponytail. And, and not a real baseball hat either. One of those like weird, weird wimpy ones with the cloth thing that you can cinch up the freebies. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Doesn't feel right. Got the cardboard bill. Yeah, yeah. All right, I don't like that. Uh, Maria. Yes. I don't trust this guy. I don't trust guys that work out. <laughs> I don't mind guys who exercise. I don't like guys who work out. I mean, There's a he difference. tells me that he's really into me, and I ask him bluntly. I'm like, if I, if you're not like, if I'm you're not into me, let me know. I'm mm -hmm. your girlfriend. Like, like, let me know. And and if there's something I could do to like, you know, make it hard, like. Let me know and, and I'll do it. And he's like, No, I think it's, he goes, I'm really into you. I think you're really hot. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. You have a pretty body, and why wouldn't I be into you? Well, he, he, he smokes a lot of weed. Hard. Yeah, Smokes so a lot of it, weed. He's on a lot of uh, substances. Yeah, the are... most common reason for a male is some <laughs> biological process, and at his age group, it would be a pharmacological problem, either a substance use like pot or speed, or supplements of various types, or maybe some ephedra in there, or God knows what, some sort of stimulant that's mm -hmm. making. It. And don't be surprised if he's actually doing steroids, and that can definitely cause this problem. You know, be a you know, be a good ploy. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to try this. Um, not being able to get it up for like three or four outings. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Then the chick gets on the ropes. Like, what? He's not attracting me? What am I doing wrong? Him to get him to really Maybe I'm not doing enough. What can, I do? yeah. what can I do? What can I do? First off, you get that You get that 45-minute BJ. 
The yeah. other thing, too, that sort of sympathy, BJ, it's going to be hard to keep flaccid during that period. But if I can pull that off, next stop, anal town. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Because now you're doing, they see, now the chick gets on the ropes, and it's like, maybe I should invite one of my friends into the bedroom. Maybe I'm not doing enough. We should, I, I, I should start experimenting. And and then whatever you get on to, if you could wake your penis up, you'd be right, then, then that would be part of the, that would be on the menu. That would not be a special. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, Dave. I'm with it. Okay, Drew. It. Drew. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, Chris. Uh, no, I mean, get me a coffee. No, <laughs> come on, buddy. I love you. All right, <laughs> Danielle. Yes. You're 18. Yeah. Uh oh. Says your dad shot himself. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. And you found the body. Yeah. That's worse. And. uh... <laughs> And that that was one month ago? Yeah, actually, it was the day after Valentine's Day. All right. What happened? Where'd you find him? What? What happened? Well, my mom left him, and then he shot himself. Okay. Uh, By the way, uh, Dave's going to be out in Bakersfield. Yeah, come on down. uh, (laughs) Yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, yeah, it's going to be down at the uh, Fox Theater on April 9th, and then uh, Gora Hills at Cannon Club. <laughs> so your dad shot himself. Yeah. Danielle? And, yes. Danielle. And, Go I, ahead. and I just and wh- wanted to ask Dr. Drew, like, what I should be feeling, because it seems like, I don't know, my mom's really coming down on me thinking I should be, like, freaking out and stuff, but I just kind of feel numb. Well, the numbness is a protection, right? It's it's a way of, of protecting yourself from o- overwhelming feelings. The problem is, inside you, there's still something going on. You just aren't able to sort of connect up with it. And there will be a consequence for that, for not going through the normal process of grieving. You'll have panic attacks or depression or some sort of reaction within the next six months or so. So it does become important for you to do some, at least some grieving work with somebody or a group because yeah. it will, it needs to surface. It's natural, it's normal, and it needs to happen. And, and, uh, it's yeah. also normal to protect yourself, too, so you don't want to force yeah. yourself into things. But you want to make sure you don't have a disturbed grieving process where nothing happens to you. Well, and was your dad uh, depressed? Was he a drug addict? What was up? Well, he had had a couple of back surgeries, so he was on, like, opiates for a couple of years of his life. Especially those last ones. And so, they, so he was, so he was an opiate addict. Okay, was and, he an alcoholic before that? Oh no, he never you know, drank. I, you know, I don't, this is a horrible situation. I, I don't understand why you would do this. In I understand why you would kill yourself, but why you do it in a place where your family, when you know, when yeah. your family members may discover you. you where know? was it? Well, he, he, they lived in Tampa, and he shot himself there. My mom had moved out, and I was really worried about him because he called me and was like. You know, oh, tell me about like his will, what he wanted to happen, and that he loved me. And of course, you know, that makes me freak out. Yeah, so I, yeah. I immediately, as soon as I could, I drove up to Tampa from Miami, and he had locked himself in his bedroom. And so I just I took the doorknob off of the screwdriver. Yeah. Oh, horrible. All right, so you got to get some. Uh, line's horrible, so I'm put her on hold. But you got to get some therapy. Yeah, some help. Yeah. Yeah. Talk it out. If I kill myself, well, you know, well, nitrous is, I mean, uh, carbon monoxide. Let's but, you know, cleaner. what if you did this? Do you think you could do this? I mean, it sounds kind of involved, but if you were going to shoot yourself and you didn't want anyone to find you, you go out in, like, a rowboat and you go out in the ocean you tie, like, a cinder block around your ankle and you got to time it where you shoot yourself and throw the block overboard, you know, like, yeah. simultaneously. But if you could work that out... Well, yeah, in Japan, uh, yeah. when people, you know, because it's such a very polite society, before they jump in front of the bullet train, I guess, they take off their shoes. So people, you know, walking on the on the subway track, or whatever, they're like, a pair of shoes there, that means someone had jumped. Right. So they can start the, uh, you know, search for the body. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was a giant penis they used to kill themselves. <laughs> no, that was, uh, that's, that's when they let their hair down. Wow. <laughs> Jumping in front of the bullet train. And here's yeah. the other thing about uh, the Japanese, too. When they kill themselves, they, they do it. They fall on a sword. They jump yeah. in front of a bullet Separate train. Them. Yeah, they're not that, you know, for me, I'm I'm, I'm like a, one of those OD guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Pussy. Yeah, I'm pussy. Like, my whole thing is, uh, first off, I'm going to see if I can masturbate to death. 
You know, that's my first my first attempt is just see if I can just jack myself. And you've been trying that off. A long time now. And I've been at that. No it's good. been a slow no death. Yeah, it's been no a slow good. death. Well, one of the uh, one of the things we did on my show, which is not relevant to anything yes. outside of the Nutri, is we <laughs> hung out with a guy who does crime scene cleanup, and 80% of his uh, cleanups are suicides, and huh. it's usually some hotel or a house somewhere where something like this poor girl's dad, you know, just decided to end it all. And then after the CSI guys get in there or whatever, the forensic team, then they call in like a regular cleaning crew and they have to clean the walls and it's a really messy thing that's why i think suicide is kind of a uh angry reaction to uh, it's it's very kind aggressive. of like yeah, very it's very aggressive, aggressive and, it, yeah. and it's it's not really an act of love it's an act of just hate unex, un, uh, unexpressed hate the, uh, at the world or at people you love or something the uh crime scene uh, rosie uh would be a good guy to know it, she's the bounty woman i think uh, <laughs> the, the point is is uh, this would be a good guy to know if you were going to kill somebody. Yeah, like he's uh, like a cleaner. Because I watch all these forensic shows, and they do uh, the guys kill people in their basement. They paint over it with epoxy based paint, and they still the dog still smells yeah. the blood underneath the epoxy paint. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. That's why you have to get the dog in on it. That, <laughs> that that'd be great. Yeah, you pay off. Sounds like a job for Ed Harris. Right? Yeah, yeah. I got you like that bone marrow. Okay. <laughs> No, you're listening. Great. Oh, uh, yeah. I got a Frisbee. But first we talk. <laughs> Some pictures. And let me tell you something. You're not going to get that fake tennis ball pump with me. When I move my arm, that tennis ball goes sailing. And you'll go get it. You're not gonna, I'm not that kind of guy. I don't believe in that. Give him a better deal. So let's talk. All right. Also, I got a friend who's moving some heroin through the airport. You got any, got any buddies working the airport? Great. Miami? Fantastic. What are their names? King? Okay. Let me write that down. <laughs> David Tell is uh, here tonight. We'll take a uh, quick break. We'll be right back. Yeah! Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. David Tell is uh, here tonight. Just got locked out. Insomniac. You're cool. You didn't miss anything. Insomniac's on uh, Comedy Central, 9 o'clock. On Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and uh, Drew's got to do a quick uh, promotion over here. Right, the girl next door, the the girl next door again. All callers 17 years of age and older who get on the air tonight will win a pair of tickets to see the girl next door, starring Alicia Cuthbert. Opens on Friday. Yeah, it's probably Alicia. Okay, I don't know. Yeah, probably. She'll be in tomorrow night. She's a midget. She's got a cleft. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Now she's really, uh, she's really hot because I'll, I'll tell you what's a nice combo. Nice combo on a woman, Drew, as a man of extreme passion, and she's a blonde, so you can uh, get down with this, is um, you want a little meat on the thigh and ass, but you don't want it to be wide. It's like if it was clay, you would take the same amount and sort of push it in instead of flatten it out. You, you know what I'm saying? Women need, I, I've said that they need to move towards cylinder. Yeah. Not, you, fl- not flat, Your right? fleshy cylinder, right, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> I'll drop trout. So I'll drop trout. <laughs> oh, he will, too, Dave. Watch, he will drop trout. Tra- watch trow. out. He'll do it. He's wild, man. Be I'll careful. I'll drop trout. I'll drop trout. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Once so. in a while, we break into a uh, small market morning yeah. radio. It got very, very uh, tense in here. It did. So. All right. But, yeah, but cylinder. Then, right? Not flat, but cylinder. Are you oh, talking about the buttock? Just the whole sort of shape should be more towards... Women don't don't know that. Right. Yeah, women... Here, here's, the, here's the whole thing. Women uh, try to get as skinny as they possibly can, yeah. and then they pack themselves, or I shouldn't say pack themselves, but they pry on these very tight jeans, mm-hmm. and when they're very skinny and they're wearing very tight jeans, their ass just looks sort yeah, of... Like it's flat. It looks like someone cut a... Uh, big novelty magnet out of cardboard you know and just put it down and it's like there's nothing there's not there's nothing to it guys like a little meat they don't like the the width part they like the girth yeah they like symmetry right yeah yeah the apple bottom as yeah call it. yeah mm-hmm. and uh alicia has that she got uh it's not it's not not wide and hippie but it's there it's not scrawny you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. i think women think that guys like paris hilton yes. like that sort of scrawny yeah, lanky a, pony yeah. kind of thing they like it. We right. don't really. We're, we don't really like that. No, there's nothing wrong with it. It's better than being fat, but we ain't really into that. Our genes, our brains are triggered to look for f- things that will be associated with fertility. Yeah. Oh, really? And, and she looks kind of is not heroin yeah. chic, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah it's exactly. hard to tell on that tape, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, <laughs> I know. 
the night vision. She's hot, though. Come yeah, on, all right. Honey, all right. Please. All right. Sonia? Yes. You're 19? Yes. Yeah. You got a fiancé that looks at porno? Yeah, no, you know, I don't really know if I should accept this or... Well, you know. this is for problems, honey. Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, how much... I, here's the whole thing. Asking a guy never to look at porno again, especially when the guy's probably 21, is a very unrealistic request. On the other hand, if he's telling you to uh, move out of the way, he's uh, looking at some uh, German stump porn, that's a bad, bad sign. Yeah. So which is it? Is he discreet about it? Uh, he's not. He's as discreet as he, he can be, but I think he discreet. should be more. I just, I just don't like finding, finding you know, these websites on my computer, you know? Do you go yeah. looking through the history? No, well, well, I go usually scroll down to go to my, you know, little links, and I'll find out that he typed something there. You know, if I didn't see it, I wouldn't have a problem. Mm. But I see it, and it's... Do you tell him that? Yeah. What kind of porn is he into? <laughs> uh, just, you know... Girl on girl, hot action. Yeah, DPs. just girl stuff, you know. It's DP. <laughs> Double kind of... Oh, you, you know it would be... Doc. Uh, you know it would be really, really bad if your fiancé to find, like, stupid chicks, dumb chicks, bonehead <laughs> chicks. And he's like, you know this Not my girlfriend.com. Just really <laughs> turned on by stupid women. <laughs> when are we getting married, baby? I can't wait. What if he was into, like, Albanian fisher women? You yeah, know, it's like a big babushka and hairy pits <laughs> yeah. and just it's thick a normal calves. normal basic That's porn, smart. but it just bothers me. All right, look, you're, you're 19. Don't get married for a while. Long while. Give it 15 years. 10 years. Okay. 12. All right, 12 and a half. 12, 12. Well, do you watch porn, too? Do you ever watch it with him? No. All right. All right, well, loosen up, baby. You're 19. <laughs> Quit busting this nuts. They're so tight. And by the way, women, who are you kidding with that? It's not that you, whatever. It's how I found out. Yeah. It's yeah. the fact that you didn't tell me. It's not that you're banging my best friend. <laughs> it's that I had to find out through Marjorie. And so I was like, no, 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 just stop doing that. Just say I don't like what you're doing. It's not right. that I don't look for it, but I, uh. See, that's how we could find Bin Laden if we handed him a couple of porn spank mags. And just send some women out there. They'd find him immediately. What's this? Oh, it's Bin Laden. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, everybody. That's the show. I want to thank Dave Attell for uh, coming in here uh, tonight. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. My uh, and our pleasure. Insomniac is uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Comedy Central, 9 o'clock. We'll uh, take a little extended break. Uh, Alicia Cuthbert in here tomorrow night from uh, The Girl Next Door. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.